Welcome to this practical demonstration on cutting. We are going to discuss the different cutting methods, the parameters used for cutting, and a few practical tips for optimal cutting. Before we get into that, I just want to explain the difference between manual and automatic cutting briefly. When cutting manually, the operator controls the speed of the cut by pulling the handle. When cutting automatically, it's the machine that drives the specimen into the cutoff wheel. This ensures a steadier pace. Automatic cutting ensures more reproducible results because the operator influence is eliminated. It is not possible to cut as slowly and controlled when cutting manually as it is when cutting automatically. The first parameter I would like to discuss is the feed speed. The feed speed is the speed with which the wheel cuts into the workpiece. This results in a force at the contact point between the wheel and workpiece. The specific pressure, or the force per area, will be constant throughout the cut when using a constant feed speed. A correct feed speed is crucial to achieving a good cutting result. If the feed speed is too high, the workpiece may be burnt. If the feed speed is too low, the process will take a long time, possibly too long. I would recommend that you always start with a low feed speed in order to gain some experience with how your specimen is behaving. The next parameter we need to consider is the rotational speed of the cutoff wheel. The rotational speed of the cutoff wheel can on some equipment be modified. This enables you to use different cutoff wheel diameters or use cutoff wheels for more materials than they were intended for. By decreasing the rotational speed, you will be able to cut harder materials. If the rotational speed is increased, the cutoff wheel becomes harder. On some equipment, the rotation speed can even be adjusted during the cutting process. Please note that this strategy only works for consumable cutoff wheels and not the diamond cutoff wheels. Depending on the equipment you have, different cutting modes are available. The standard cutting mode is what we call direct cut, where the workpiece is driven directly into the cutoff wheel. This mode is available on all cutting machines and is in most cases enough. But sometimes, if you need to cut in very hard materials or large work pieces, there are different cutting modes available which will reduce the contact area. Three different modes designed for minimizing the specific pressure are available. The first one is called ExiCut. When using ExiCut, the cutoff wheels moves back and forth slightly to minimize the contact area. The next one is called Rotating Cut. This is available on precision cutoff machines. Here the contact area is minimized by constantly rotating the specimen. A third mode which is also designed to minimize the contact area is called Oscillating Cut. Here the specimen oscillates or is tilted during cutting. Oscillation cutting is available on precision cutoff machines. We also have two cutting modes enabling the machine to cut larger specimens than is possible with direct cut. The first is called Axial Cut Sweep. It gives a very smooth cut even though the cutoff wheel moves back and forth. The second mode is called Axial Cut Step and it provides a very fast cut of large specimens. These cutting modes are available on the large cutoff machines. Now we have discussed the machine related parameters, but we are still missing the most important parameter, the cutoff wheel. The cutoff wheels are divided into two groups, abrasive cutoff wheels and long-term cutoff wheels. 
The abrasive cutoff wheels are made from bakelite and contain either silicon dioxide or aluminum oxide abrasives. These are used to cut metallic specimens. Silicon dioxide abrasives for non-ferrous metals and aluminum oxide for ferrous metals. These cutoff wheels will wear down gradually. The long-term cutoff wheels are steel-based with diamond abrasives on the perimeter. These are used to cut non-metallic specimens like ceramics, centered carbides, or polymers. Since diamonds last a lot longer than silicon dioxide and aluminum oxide abrasives, the long-term cutoff wheels last very long compared to the abrasive cutoff wheels. Due to the durability and the high cost of diamonds, the layer of abrasives around the perimeter is relatively thin. You might ask yourself, why not use the diamond cutoff wheels for everything then? The answer to that question is very simple. If a diamond wheel is used to cut metallic specimens, it will break almost immediately. You can, however, use them if only a small part of the specimen is metallic. In this case, you should dress the cutoff wheel by cutting into the alumina dressing stick in order to keep the cutoff wheel clean. For making the right selection, a cutoff wheel selection guide is available online or in the Struer's Consumables catalog. I will give you an example on how to choose the correct cutoff wheel. If you know the approximate hardness of your specimen, you can plot it on the selection guide. This will give you a material group. Based on this information, together with your specific cutoff machine, the guide will identify the needed cutoff wheel. No matter if you are cutting manually or automatically, clamping of the workpiece is crucial. If the workpiece can move during cutting, it will break the cutoff wheel. Several clamping systems are available depending on your needs. The standard system is called quick clamping. This system consists of an adjustable clamp and a backstop. The quick clamping system is fast and easy when clamping workpieces of uncomplicated geometries like rods or bars. For workpieces with more complicated shapes, it is better to use the vertical clamping system. Here the workpiece is clamped onto the cutting table from the top. Together with various accessories, the vertical clamping system enables the clamping of almost any shape. Now I would like to demonstrate a few examples. The first shows how a specimen with a fragile coating can be clamped with either a quick clamping or vertical clamping system. With a quick clamping system, I will protect the coating with rubber inserts. I will then clamp it in a direction which enables me to cut the coating before cutting the substrate. With the vertical clamping system, I will follow a similar process. First protecting the coating with rubber pads, and then clamping it in a direction which enables me to cut the coating before cutting the substrate. Now an example on how titanium will look when cutting with the correct cutoff wheel. You can see we have a nice smooth surface without any signs of overheating. When the same rod is cut with an unsuitable cutoff wheel, you can see that the surface has changed color, a clear sign of thermal deformation.